Doug, somebody writes in to say, I just bought uh, your new book on Ann Bradstreet. <laughs> Why? Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> to help me gin up excitement about poetry. Do you have poetry habit recommendations and do you enjoy poetry? So, yes, I do enjoy poetry very much. And I do have a poetry habit recommendation or at least something I've found useful. Um, and that is I've, uh, sort of at the center of my reading schedule. I've got uh, four books, four kinds of books. Uh, I want always to be reading a work of fiction, um, mm -hmm. like a novel. I want always to be reading what I call a bucket book. That's a book that I really ought to have read by this point in my life, but somehow mysteriously mm -hmm. haven't. I started, I think, with Moby Dick. I, okay. Uh, right. I, I really ought to have read Moby Dick. And, uh -huh. uh, and I had, so I, I, I read through Moby Dick as a bucket book. So a work of fiction, a, um, a bucket book, um, a book of poetry, um, so I always want to be, uh, always want to read, be reading mm -hmm. uh, some poetry. I'm so I'm currently working through the collected works of uh, Robert Frost, okay, big volume. So I'm uh -huh. uh, reading through that, and then the fourth is the book I'm reading. You know, whatever book I'm reading. Okay. So that's the center, and then I've got other books and other stacks right. in other places. But uh, I always want to be chipping away at a volume of poetry. If you're, when you're reading poetry, um, how, I mean, practical question here, how many pages, like, do you, how do you um, moderate how much time you spend? Do you read one poem a day? Usually with Frost, it's a, he's, um, he writes short poetry, not epic poetry. If it's Paradise Lost, then I'd read a page or two. If it's a collection of short poems, then I would read a poem or two, uh -huh. or just, something every day or something every time I, I, I turn to it. There are people who are um, poetry connoisseurs mm -hmm. where they, you know, they want the house, the house to be quiet and they want to yeah. read the poem aloud to themselves and, and, and dig down and study the meaning, um, meaning of the whole thing. And I want to read intelligently, but in my experience, the thing that blesses me the most about poetry is the turns of phrase or the, or the, the things that, that yeah. just resonate with me. So for example, when I read, uh, T.S. Eliot's, uh, four quartets, uh -huh. um, the first time there's a phrase in there, ash on an old man's sleeve is all the ash burnt roses leave. As soon as I read that, it was memorized. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what it means. True much but, of the poem, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but the, um, those sorts of things just bless me. I like how the phrases roll around in your mouth. And it's just a, I just think it's a good edifying exercise. Do you, do you read aloud or is it just? No, I, I read. Okay. And are you marking it as you go? I do. I mark. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever go back to reread your marks or is the, is the moment of marking just your way of like enjoying it? Uh, it's my way of enjoying it. And sometimes when I go back, it's the markings help me find things again. If I say, "Oh, I, what was that phrase?" Mm -hmm. and I and I and I know that because I marked it, I know it's on yeah. the upper left hand side of the page. So I go back and to find things again if I want to use it or uh -huh. or quote it or something like that. How often does the poetry that you're reading show up as quotations or direct references versus how often does it show up as kind of the muse that um, guides your own uh, prose? You know, I'd say the the example or the muse or setting the rhythm or or helping shape the cast of mind is, I think, significant. But I it, I can't track it. I do think it's a big that's a big deal uh, mm -hmm. because I've been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. And um, Tolkien once said that his books, his ideas, grew up out of the leaf mold of his mind. Mm -hmm. And so the poetry I read is like the leaves on the forest floor. It's it's the leaf mold, uh -huh. and but I don't track the leaves. I, so I yeah. do think that that's a big, um, a big element. And then there is a significant element where a phrase will come to mind, uh, uh -huh. uh, you know, from Eliot or from um, Milton or from you know, uh -huh. and I'll want to use it. And sometimes I'll I'll roll it into prose that I'm writing. Okay. Know? If you had to say top five favorite um, poems or poets, where would you go? Uh, George Herbert. Uh, would be a, a mm -hmm. top, uh, a top poet uh, that I uh, enjoy very much. 
I have, I've enjoyed Frost, but he's not near the top. I would say, um, I would have to go, um, well, Andrew Marvell, uh, another metaphysical, mm -hmm. uh, another metaphysical poet. I would say, uh, I enjoyed Anne Bradstreet's poetry very much. She's not a, she's not a poet of the first rank, but mm -hmm. she's, she's got the gift, she's got the gift. And there's mm -hmm. some things that she did that I think are quite, quite good. Um, uh, let's see, more modern, uh, as a modern, if I take a modern poet that I've enjoyed, um, uh, Billy Collins would be a, a mm. modern poet that I've, okay. that I've enjoyed um, very much.